One of the things we saw in a number of soybean fields this fall, really across a broad area, was some late season Phytophthora root rot problems. And when you take a standing soybean plant that may be two or three feet tall and completely kill it, that's a pretty bad disease. <laughs> Well, anything that's going to kill soybeans is pretty bad. But this Phytophthora, I'm going to go back to our drainage discussion that we have, it seems like, almost every week on the show. When you have poor drainage on the farm, you're much more likely to get diseases, and Phytophthora is one of the ones that shows up quite often in those poorly drained soybean fields. So. I always look at, yes, you can treat the symptoms. Yes, we can find varieties that are better. We can do some other things that we'll talk about here today, but let's fix the root cause, all right? Get out there and get some tiling work done, improve your drainage. No matter how you're going to do it, just get that drainage improved, and then you'll have much less chance of getting Phytophthora. Now, certainly it can show up any year if you have the right weather conditions, even in well-drained fields, but it's just you're a lot less likely to get it in well-drained fields. Well, like you said, let's fix the root cause, and that's yep. what we're talking about here. We're talking about a disease that's going to infect soybean plants through their root system. Now, there are a number of different things you can do to help protect your plant, like using seed treatments, for example. This is very effective when you're talking about protecting against early season diseases. However, a lot of the Phytophthora problems that we're seeing, they're popping up late in the summer, like late July and into August, and all of a sudden we're having complete plant death in certain areas of fields. Well, that's a big problem, and seed treatment treatment just isn't going to hang around that long to protect you season long. No, but seed treatment is where this whole thing needs to start. I just see too many soybeans around the country that don't have seed treatment on. It only costs a couple, three bucks. That's it. Soybeans are worth a lot more than that per bushel. You probably only need a quarter bushel, if that even, to justify paying for that seed treatment. And a lot of times what we find is some years you'll gain absolutely nothing. You'll gain zero out of the fungicide seed treatment you put down. But the years where you do gain, a lot of times it's three bushels, five bushels, 10 bushels. It's big time gains. So when you average it out over a period of years, even on our own farm, I think on average, we're probably gaining at least two to three bushels, maybe four. Well, again, if we were only gaining a quarter bushel, that's all we needed. When you're gaining two, three, four bushels, you know what we've done. We're 10 times the money that we spent. Well, I think it's kind of interesting. You know, we look at the seed treatment and yes, it definitely helped. You know, there's one field I was in this summer that had seed treatment on it, looked great, but late in the summer we saw maybe about one out of 20 plants, maybe about every 20th plant along the way, it, you know, it was just not holding. And some of that I look for as coverage with your seed treatment. If you're not getting good coverage, maybe you got 95% of the seeds covered just right, but one out of 20 seeds wasn't covered very well with that seed treatment. That can really show up and hurt you in the field. Now, the other thing that we saw is a difference between the resistance traits that are in soybeans. I'm not talking about Roundup resistance versus the Liberty Link trait or something like that. What I'm talking about is the Phytophthora resistant genes that are present in many of the soybeans that are used in North America. The old genes like the RPS1A and RPS1C gene, they're still very effective on certain races of Phytophthora. But probably 15 years ago, we started using a K gene, an RPS1K gene on our farm, and that started hitting a lot more of the strains that were prevalent in our area. Now we're seeing, especially in the Red River Valley that's right on the North Dakota-Minnesota border, we see a lot of trouble with race 25, and that's creeping down into some other areas of the country. And the K gene, C gene, A gene, none of them get race 25, but a new RPS3A gene is very effective on race 25. We've seen outstanding results from that this fall. Okay, but if you have this K gene or, I mean, any of the other genes that are out there, are you going to get season-long performance from day one when you put the seed in the ground all the way to the end of the season? Well, here's the thing. I don't think you get day one performance out of any of those. I think it takes a little while for that plant to get that resistance going. So I think very early in the year, that seed treatment is absolutely critical. Having drainage done properly on your farm so your crop does not sit with wet feet. If you have those two things accomplished, and even if you have a 1A, C, or K gene, I think you're gonna do pretty well on Phytophthora. But let's say you've got one or two of those first steps wrong. Here's where that RPS3 aging really helps. And then everything else in the field, from fertility to weed control to disease control to insect problems, all those things, if you've got a couple steps along the way wrong, they're all going to add to your problems. All right, you talked about the different strains. How do you know which strain you've got? Well, that's a really good question. And some of the universities, especially land-grant universities, have done some nice work on which 
uh, races of Phytophthora are prevalent in your area, that would be a great place to start or with any of the soil testing labs in your area. You can run tests for certain races with your soil, but it is kind of expensive. If you want to know what every race that's prevalent in your soil is, you may spend several hundred dollars on a sample. If you just want to know, hey, do I have race 25, that may not be that expensive and is probably a good idea if you have Phytophthora loss in certain areas of your fields. Well, once again, this Phytophthora issue is an enormous deal across the country, especially in a year like 2011, when it was a little bit wetter than normal, at least in the upper Midwest. So when you take a look at Phytophthora, again, we would suggest improving your drainage, planting varieties that have resistance to the right strains of Phytophthora that you have in your area, and then finally making sure that you've got a good seed treatment on. One other thing you want to be sure of is weed control. Have you identified this week's Weed of the Week? 